All right, now for example four, it says put f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x minus 2 in proper rational form and determine the end behavior from the result. So we have a degree 2 on top, degree 1 on bottom. So it's not in proper rational form. So we do long division for that. So that would be we're taking x minus 2 and we have x squared minus 3x plus 1. So we do long division on that. Uh, this would be an x here to give me x squared there. x times negative 2 minus 2x. Long division, we always subtract, so those cancel. You have to be good with your long division to continue this. So this flips to a plus. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1x. Bring down the next term, plus 1. x, what times x gives me negative x? That would be a minus 1. Negative x here. Negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. And then we subtract, so this flips to a minus 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. So nothing left to bring down, so that's my remainder. So the remainder, put that in another color, would be minus 1 over x minus 2. So when we do that, the in behavior asymptote, in this case it's going to be a slant asymptote, is everything in front of the remainder. So I have a slant asymptote in this case, we'll abbreviate with SA, is equal to x minus 1. The slant asymptote, let me put it this way, is at y equals x minus 1. So yes, it's a slant asymptote because it has slope to it. It's not just a number. y equals a number is a horizontal line. y equals, if you have an x term, it has a slope to it, and in this case uh, the slope would be 1. So that creates a slope asymptote. Uh, down here in this uh, section here, you can read through this and see. Um, it's a little bit wordy in my opinion, but uh, what I've created for my students is a little what I call the ultimate rationals cheat sheet. And we can see that we can analyze these things uh, in the way that we just did or if we can remember a few little notes then it actually makes it easier. So we have, when do we have a horizontal asymptote? We can use this acronym, Bobo Botten Eats DC. So I'm going to write that out. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. Bobo Botten Eats DC. So that's our acronym. So this stands for this, uh, bigger on bottom our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Bigger on bottom, B-O-B, this y-intercept is 0. So bigger on bottom, our horizontal is y equals 0. Bigger on top is what this stands for. We have none. We have no uh, horizontal, but likely a slant. Likely have a slant. And we have to do long division to test that. And each DC, this stands for exponents are the same. Then we divide their coefficients to get the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's the sheet right here. Uh, if you're in my class, you have a copy of this. If you're not in my class, then you can screenshot this and, and it will help you. So we'll, as we move forward in this unit and, and we get into graphing the rationals in more detail, uh, this list will come in handy. So let's take this information and let's look at, at these prior examples. So the first example we had uh, 4x over x minus 5. So let's analyze that using our new uh, little acronym here. So we had 4x over the quantity x minus 5. Well, this would be exponents are the same. I have an exponent of 1 here, 1 here. The degrees are the same. Exponents are the same. So divide the coefficients here. So my coefficient is 4 here and 1 here. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So that gave me a horizontal asymptote, y equals 4. That gives you, that was this one. Exponents were the same, so we divide the coefficients. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 4. The second example we worked with was, I'll write it down here, x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, this one was bigger on top. We had a square on top, first power on bottom, bigger on top, so no horizontal asymptote and we likely have a slant, so we need to do the long division, which we did up here, and we found the slant to be y equals x minus 1. So the Bobo Botten Eats DC actually helps shortcut that a little bit. And one other thing to note, if it's bigger on top by one degree, so degree 2 over degree 1, so the degree of the numerator is one larger than the denominator, that's when you're going to have a slant. And these notes right here are telling you that. If 
when you work this out, when you do your long division, if in front of the remainder, g of x is what they're calling it, that's the part in front of the remainder, if g of x is of degree 1, it's a slant asymptote. If g of x is a constant, it's a horizontal. So that's what we found up here. Degree 1 was a slant. That's what they're saying here, this part right here. Degree 1, slant, constant like we had here, then it's a horizontal. But you can still use this acronym, BOBOBOT and ECC. And we will apply that more in later lessons. All right, that's it for this one. All right, one last thing I wanted to read through this again. So horizontal asymptotes, BOBOBOT and ECC. That's the acronym. That's It sounds crazy, but it's easy to remember. You can write it at the top of any test and when you first get it, and it'll help you remember. So again, the BOBO stood for bigger on bottom. That's Y equals zero for the horizontal asymptote. BOTN, B-O-T-N. Bigger on top is what the B-O-T stood for. No horizontal. The N was no horizontal. But you likely have a slant it, as long as the numerator is one degree above the denominator. And then the last one was E to DC. And that stood for the E was exponents, A, R, T, V, S, same, D, divide, C, coefficients. Exponents are the same. Divide their coefficients. And that will give you the horizontal asymptote. So we had, in our example earlier, we had an example where the uh, exponents were the same. That was this first one. We divided their coefficients and got four, and that gave us the answer. And then we had one where it was bigger on top, so we have none. We did long division. We found the slant asymptote there. All right, that is it for this lesson.